That's a first. The music played, but I didn't see the video. This guy did. Oh, you did? Okay. It didn't show up on my end. All right. No problem. All right. Well, anyway, welcome everyone to the April 12th edition of Signals from Mars. We have uh, Metal Dan flashing the uh, Signals from Mars cap. We have Dr. Poison with some Dr. Pepper. (laughs) <laughs> with the signals from Mars t-shirt. We have Ed Ferguson in Lexington looking as if he is sitting in a kingly throne for over uh <laughs> over music, Linux, and all types of uh different things. That's correct. It's Big screen TV good. here in front of me with the masters on this weekend. There you go. Um and uh, joining us from Ireland, there he is, Anthony. Hi. All right. Cool. So, uh, as is um, customary for these hour one shows, we have a few topics here that I've come up with this week. There are probably other things that will come up along the way. If anyone wants to chime in and mention any other things, that's uh, that's cool too. But uh, the first topic that I wanted to discuss is something that Metal Dan actually mentioned after I posted a video of Metallica covering Elton John. And it's something along the lines with uh, a topic that I've thought about, especially in the last 10, 15, 20 years where bands have become kind of slothish and instead of giving us like b-sides with covers of songs or something obscure or whatnot we're getting live tracks of the same songs that we already have like 10 versions of so uh, at least for me personally i miss bands releasing quality b-side tracks and um it's kind of something that i want to discuss with you guys Dan, you mentioned it the other day with uh, with Metallica doing this. There you go. Anthrax with the Indian signal single. Excuse me. What's the B-side to that? Uh, Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath, and Taint on that. And then you got the shit like the Maiden that used to do. Yeah. You know, with the Japanese import that I had to go find somewhere. I don't remember where. And it's got uh, a number of the Beast live. King of Twilight, Rainbow's Gold, and Cross-Eyed Mary. Yeah. As a B-side. Cross uh, and good. then there was like a Maiden one back in the day. I, I Somewhere in my catalog. Looks a lot like uh, I see in the background on this video right here. Of a whole library from Ed. Uh, <laughs> there was a fight. Or not a fight. Well, there was a discussion between Nico and Steve and Bruce. Yeah. And they were having an argument. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And no, I listened mission. to that shit. I listened to that shit over and over. The stupid argument or whatever. It was so much fun. That- Mission from Mary. Yeah, you know, it was just discovery. Go ahead. That was that was the night that Nico almost punched Bruce Dickinson out and almost quit Maiden on his yeah. first tour uh, because he recorded that whole thing. And apparently, uh, Nico had played a drum solo at the time. Maiden, and after this, Nico refused to do drum solos. He decided that he would prefer to just play another song with the band. He. Um, there was something wrong, I think, with his snare and his tech was trying to swap out snares as he's playing the uh, the solo and something had happened. So he was telling um, Rod Smallwood or, or whatever and and Bruce. You, you made me fuck. You yeah. made me fuck. <laughs> so, yeah. And that, which you actually just said, because I know this, uh, because I, I have that on cassette single and also CD single. Those B-sides are actually Aces High and Two Minutes to Midnight. Mm. So the, the British version of that, when they were celebrating the 10th anniversary of the band, because I have the, the CD version of it, it's everything up till Seventh Sun, and they had like a specific seal. And if you had the vinyl, I have somewhere behind me, I have um, 
sanctuary and running free, but it was a double gatefold that opened up. Um, and I mean, here's the thing that annoys me with Maiden. I love Maiden. It's one A and one B. They're one B for me. Uh, but they've re-released everything a million fucking times and no one gives them shit over it. The, the, the okay, okay, okay. fanboys that follow them have no problem with it. But back to the B-sides, back to the B-sides, back to the topic. All right. Okay, let's go. <laughs> well, tell me more because I haven't heard it in years. It's And I'm not going to dig it out. It's 10 minutes of gold. Of them. Yeah. Was there? Go ahead. Was there more to that? You're you're educating me. You're educating everybody. You're remembering. Go. It's 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 exactly what I mentioned. It was the the solo gone wrong. Uh, he's bitching about it. He realizes that Bruce is recording the solo or the the discussion that he's having with Ron Smallwood, and uh, and he's about to beat the piss out of Bruce Dickinson because Nico was was actually a boxer at one point, so. He had no issues with, with, uh, with beating the shit out of Bruce, and he was almost out of Maiden before he became the you know household name that he ended up being in the band. We still say "fuck my old boots." <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what a lot of that slang was. Uh, I was gosh, eighteen. 17 and it was all british shit that i'd never heard of I was like what do they do i should listen to it now and i might get more of the references right. but it's cool that's that was a b-side shit that we're, this should still be happening you know and it doesn't have to be that somebody's created a sound bite but just this stuff cross-eyed mary and back black bart blues whatever that uh indians 12 inch you just showed i have that but it's a mispressing. It doesn't have that B side on it. Oh wow! I, thought, I, th I was hoping to hear them do Sab Sabbath Bloody Sabbath, but uh, I can't remember what's on the B side of the my pressing. It's just another song from Among the Living. Oh wow! That's that. That's is it wonder, worth anything more? Because well, I don't know. I never thought about it until just now. Yeah. Yeah, because a lot of those misprints, there are people that are out there looking for a lot of that stuff. So that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Anthony, Anthony's sitting on a thousand on a thousand pound uh, vinyl or a thousand euro vinyl, and he doesn't even realize it. <laughs> well, look at I was at a uh, record fair there the other day, well, a couple of weeks ago, and you're looking at all these uh, records and you're like, I have that, I have that, I have that. And they're like 80 euro. Uh, and like, what? Yeah. How the fuck did that get worth 80 euro? You know? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I think the, the key is buy them when they're new and just, you know, in time, they'll be worth something. Maybe y you hope there there's, um, well, let's let's discuss this a little more. There's something else that I'm going to add to this list of questions, which reminds me of something that came up earlier this week along the lines of what you just mentioned, Anthony. Um, Ed, your opinion on, on bands releasing B-sides? Yeah, I kind of miss it. I, uh, I remember enjoying all the Anthrax stuff that you all mentioned, especially, you know, Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath. That was really cool. And then, uh, you know, Slayer did a bit of that. You remember they released Postmortem. And then on the flip side, they uh, did a uh, reworked version of Criminally Insane where they did a different introduction to it. And, uh, you know, my mind's kind of slipping on what all was out back then, but that was always cool. I, I remember, you know, back when we still had 45s, a lot of times they would have different songs on the uh, B side. I remember uh, Joan Jett. I remember back when I was listening to I Love Rock and Roll. On the flip side of that, she had You Don't Know What You've Got Till It's Gone, which is off the first record, although they did a little bit faster, kind of more like they did a, you know, like they uh, pumped it out in the garage for a sec. Right. So it was like a better recording of the song that was on the first record. So stuff like that, I think, is fun. And I wish, uh, wish, yeah, it's, 
I don't know. I think maybe CDs and streaming have kind of erased all of that. You you would think that streaming would make it easier to do, though. I know. Although it just makes it, it's not as, you know, it's not the same as when you're buying a physical copy, I don't think. Like, yeah. like you're not really recognizing it as a, something separate from the rest of the catalog. It's like a, a, a digital single now is just one song. Yeah, it's just another song in that like, big list of... You don't get, like... You, well, you do get... But you're rare enough to get, a, like, an A and a B side digital single. Right. The the uh, two Kitty songs that I posted, for example, recently, they're on Apple Music, at least, as a single, uh, both of them together, which surprised me for that very reason, because most of the time you get just the one song as the digital single or it'll just be the album and you're getting the, you know, a track that's released ahead of time. So yeah, that, that kind of caught me, uh, caught me off guard. Um, Brad, how about you? Do you miss bands doing this kind of stuff? Um, first of all, right out of the gate, I think we set a new indoor, albeit wind aided record, for F-bombs dropped on Signals from Mars. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm pretty sure we had the over-under at 10, and we busted that within the first 90 seconds. So, <laughs> Well, that means YouTube will not be ranking this video very high. It will not be suggesting yeah. it to a lot of people. And, uh, and I'll probably lose some sponsors that I don't monitors. have. And, <laughs> and, um, the algorithms will poo-poo this show for, you know, whatever. Wow. I've had discussions. You shouldn't swear See, it's because of the algorithm. I'm like, okay, so the two people that weren't watching will stop watching all of a sudden? <laughs> ahead, all, of, all of a sudden now you've made this show much rarer. So like those coveted B-sides, there you, you go. have to really look for this show to be able to watch it now. <laughs> so, and kids, let me tell you, even though that we got a lot to go here, this is well worth you finding the show and watching it. All right. Um, B-sides. Here's, the, you know, and, and yeah, I'm going to sound like an old man here because I am an old man. But guys, I mean, the days when you would drive like from this record store to this record store to that record store, looking for a specific record that you heard about and trying to find it. And then when you did find it, it was just like, Oh, this is like the best thing ever. And, and you know, the, the hurry to get it, get it home and listen to it. And, um, yeah. Now it's like, Oh, well, here, let me get on my phone and Oh, there we go. I got all the B sides right here. Yeah. It, it's, it's awesome. But yet it takes some of the, the magic of the discovery and uh, the adventure of finding music. Um, so, so, so many memories flooding back with you saying that. Uh, I told my, um, uh, and, and Dan is showing the, the signal. Jesus, I keep saying signal now. Single. Uh, I just got I just got my driver's license. I had inherited my brother's old 79 Volkswagen Rabbit. It had snowed out and my parents were at a Christmas party. So I wasn't supposed to be driving anywhere, but we were going to go get those Maiden uh, cassette singles. And I was going to get one. My cousin was going to get one. And my two friends were each going to get one. So we were going to cover uh, Power Slave and Somewhere in Time. We were going to we were going to split all this, all the different um, singles between us. So I'm taking these back roads. There was snow and ice everywhere. We got to this turn. And my car just went straight into a snowbank. We had to all get out of the car, push the car out of the snowbank. And I'm thinking, my parents are killing me. And my cousin's saying, we're going home now. We're going home, right? Right? We're going home. And I said, fuck that. We came this far. We're going to the record store. <laughs> so we went and we, we picked those up. And my parents found out about this story like four or five years later. I was 
crapping myself thinking, oh, we're getting caught, but at least we got the we got the stuff we wanted to get. So I'll I'll withstand the punishment so long as I got those B sides that that I wanted. So um some some of these things weren't even available in the US. I had to yeah. ask somebody in the UK one time to give me something for Armored Saint that I saw coming out that I had to have. And I had her get me three of them just so I had a backup, you know, and you know, you, you'd read that shit in Kerrang and Kerrang isn't a U.S. thing. You yeah. have to go find, that was hard to get in the U.S. as it was too. Yeah. You yeah. know, it was a constant going back to the record store and then asking the guy, Hey, we, I know this is coming out because Kerrang tells me, will you please get me a copy of this? You know, will you, it was, it was, it was fun. Yeah. 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 The, uh, the other one too is being able to travel to Europe in the summers I remember getting, for example, the Anthrax EP, uh, Penicuffson, which backwards is nice fucking EP. Yeah. And there were tracks on that, similar to what you have with Indians, where Sabbath Bloody Sabbath ended up on the I'm the Man EP. There were tracks off of that, which oh, ended up right. on Attack of the uh, yeah. Killer Bees. Yeah. It was and good shit. I remember being so pissed that I wasn't the only one that had a physical copy. Oh, I got, I got one too. You know, it was like, damn it. It was gold this to me. You know, yeah. I, I, I could go around and say, see, I have this. You don't. <laughs> it was one of those things, you know, we all bought what I bet they made a lot. They did a killing on that release and we all bought them. It yeah. Was great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the other thing that, came up with what Anthony was talking about. Uh, the record store or re yeah. Record store day is next week in the entire world. So a mm. lot of unique stuff is going to be released, but here's my ax to grind with labels and with bands, because now there's actually a, um, there's an Irish record store. Uh, which is where I ordered the um, Trick or Treat soundtrack from. And they're already advertising you can get U.S. imports for Record Store Day, but they cost like 80 euros a pop as opposed to the 30 that the other vinyls are going to be worth. Um, three years ago, they released the fight album War of Words in the U.S., white vinyl wasn't released in Europe until three, four years later. It annoys me that they do that nowadays because if it's record store day, shouldn't it be the same everywhere in the world? Yes. What, what do you guys think of that? I mean, is it, do you guys think it's fine that the UK gets their own record store day? Canada gets a different one. US gets a different one. We know. I think it's it's actually kind of like that from store to store because from what I was told by my local record store, you know, it, of course you can go online and see the big list, but right. they don't actually know everything they're going to receive. I don't <laughs> think, and they're not like just by default getting a little bit of everything. Hmm. So that would make sense even more so probably compared from here to uh, over in the UK maybe. But. It totally makes sense like why why would it be the same everywhere like the whole point is they're all limited editions uh you know if, if they're everywhere on the same day then they're hardly limited and i know it's a pain in the arse because you can't get the one you want but right that's that's the problem yeah. that's part of it the, like, the, the, my biggest issue here in spain is that rock releases on record store day are slim to none. So anything yeah. remotely rock based isn't available. The only thing that I'm getting, for example, and because I pre-ordered it, I was able to get them to um, a, a store that's about an hour away from me. Uh, got um, They pre-ordered Life of Agony's second album for me, Ugly, which is being mm -hmm. released in Europe for the first time on vinyl. So I saw that somewhere else, asked them, and, and they're, they're actually getting it for me ahead of time. But 
that's that's my biggest issue is for example that fight album it took years to come out here of course you can go on discogs you can pay 60 euros shipping from the u.s to to europe and you know you're paying a hundred and something for a vinyl which is ridiculous uh the anthrax the bush era albums they re-released them two years ago on vinyl in the u.s uh, they earlier this week they finally announced that uh, Sound of White Noise and Stomp 442 are coming out on splatter vinyl, but two years later, two years after the fact, and it's not the entire, not the entire uh, Bush era catalog. I mean, they had already done We've Come for You All and Greater of Two Evils, but they're still missing one vinyl the one that I want the most <laughs> I've, I've had, I've actually had uh, sound of white noise on vinyl for like 10 years now, because there was a Spanish label that licensed it from Electra. And uh, that's actually a topic that I brought up to John Bush. One of the times that I interviewed him, but um, so which one is it you want the most volume eight and you don't have that one. Do not have it. Okay, if, we're going to have to find it for you somewhere. It's It was re-released in the States. I, I intend on picking it up this summer. Oh, that's right. You're making a trip here. Yeah, yeah. So the the my biggest issue will be, I know what it's like traveling with vinyl, mm -hmm. is, is making sure that it doesn't come back here with the corners all bent up and everything. <laughs> so I'm going to be uh, asking for cardboard boxes to... Uh, to put the stuff in in the suitcases, so or the shit doable, yeah. or it disappears from your luggage by the goddamn <laughs> luggage people. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 another one. But believe me, as a kid, as a kid coming back mm -hmm. from here when when they were getting rid of vinyl from stores, and and now thinking of of the conversion rate it was like four bucks of vinyl so i remember one year i came back with everything everything that i didn't have from the police on vinyl a bunch of inve albums a bunch of rainbow albums it was a hodgepodge of things that i didn't have on vinyl i was like okay four bucks sure i'll load up i had i had a stack like th like this big that's heavy suitcase and the suitcase was mostly vinyl and just clothes around it <laughs> it was heavy as fuck, but luckily nothing got stolen. Um, all right. So uh, moving on here, speaking of John Bush, earlier this week, Metal Blade announced that they had signed a, a new band called Category 7. Category 7 has John Bush on vocals, Jack Gibson of Exodus on bass, Jason Bittner of uh, Overkill on drums, uh, Phil Demel of Machine Gun, Machine Gun, yeah, Machine Head fame, and Carrie King's new solo band, Violent Machine Head Kelly. Kelly, Machine Gun Kelly, yeah, Machine Head know. Kelly, uh, uh, Machine yeah. Head Carrie, yeah, sorry, Machine Gun Carrie, there you go, and the other guitarist is Mike Orlando. Holy shit! Yeah, so uh, Metal Dan, since you're giving us the uh, holy Fuck. shit remark. That I'm well, about this now. What, Bittner, what Bittner is an animal, man. Bittner is what an amazing drummer. I met him. Nice guy. A little different, but we're all different. He he was calm. I think he wanted to mess with me. <laughs> I, I didn't have time for it, but I, I'm glad that I got a. I didn't know about this. I don't know why John needs it, but this is the first I've heard of it. Um, I'll tell you why John needs this. Because they can now go out and tour this album and play Bush Era Anthrax. Oh. He's been trying in a way because Eddie pushed him on it. And stupid Eddie would ask him, you know, why are you, and you're an Armored Saint, why aren't you playing Anthrax songs? And I was like, shut up, Eddie. There's nothing wrong with Armored Saint. Yeah. Keep your opinion to yourself. And, uh, you know, he so wants to break up Armored Saint and have John go off. Well, Armor Saint has are working in the studio on a new album, but that's a separate topic. 
Here's here's the thing though, John. The last time I spoke to him was when um, Punching the Sky came out. At this mm. point, that's what three years ago. Well, um, John's kids are now yeah. late teens. John is back at a stage where he can now tour for half of the year. Most of Armored Saint has day jobs. Uh, John does too, but it's a business that he has with his wife, so it's kind of a little different. John has been trying to play Bush era Anthrax for years. This band can do it. And this will allow him to go out for with Armored Saint for three months a year. And it will allow him to go out with this band for another two to three months. Cool. And he'll be able to see is, you know, test the waters. Do people want to see this? And let's be honest, this will help Anthrax as well because. Yep. Charlie's now in Pantera. Scott's in Mr. Bungle. Scott also has a motor sister. And this will mean that Anthrax doesn't have to go out for 10 months with Testament and Death Angel and play the same set list all the time. If John is pushing, is John is pulling people in to see him play these songs, this will give Anthrax a reason to do dates with him, whether it's with Joey doing half the show or whether it's a few, a few, uh, tours here and there as sound of white noise or something different to separate the two, much like heaven and hell and black Sabbath. But we all know it was all basically Sabbath. Um, I, I think that there, the anthrax camp is waiting to see what's going to happen with this. That's a great thing. You know, that's a, that's a hell of a bill for anywhere touring with Anthrax with them opening up and you get Scott coming on and sharing if they're all going to collaborate. It's great. And Europe, Europe, you guys are going to do great because this is going to be on your bills for your festivals. And uh, Bittner doesn't get to play enough as it is with Overkill. They don't tour enough, in my opinion, and they got DDs on uh, arm problems, shoulder problems. So Bittner needs a job anyways. Yeah, that's <laughs> fucking great. Yeah. Ed, what do you what do you think about this band? I don't know yet. It it sounds interesting. I'm look forward to hearing it. But uh, you mentioning it today is the first time I've heard about it. Okay, I didn't see the headline for Metal Blade. Yeah, it's it's been on the um, all the usual sites have been posting about it. I received the press release as well. And uh, John obviously has the whole Metal Blade connection, mm -hmm. so it, it makes sense. Uh, he's, you know, been a friend of of Brian from Metal Blade since the label started with Bl Brian Slagle. So it just makes sense. Um, Anthony, I know that you're, you've always been big on uh, Bush Era Anthrax, and we've talked about it, so... Um, would you be looking forward to these guys doing some music from that era? Uh, it's hard to say. You know, I have to wait and see what they sound like. I haven't. Are they doing original music? I'm sure they are. Yeah, they're doing yeah. original music, and the way that they've described it is that they're picking up where Thin Lizzy left things off is how they're billing it. Okay. Well, yeah, that's be interested to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I don't know. Easy like, to say that. A lot of this stuff doesn't really excite me. Like, you know, I know we're going to be talking about the new Kerry King song, but, right. uh, you know, these new kind of super groups, they're grand. Yeah, and that and, and that's the whole thing because Mike Orlando, for example, who's in this band, is in a band with uh, Corey Glover from Living Color, and the songs that I've posted have sounded have sounded neat, have sounded better than the stuff that Corey did with George Lynch, for example. But it's what you're saying. We have so many of these bands thrown together, where 
where's the investment on our end? You know, is the music going to grab us enough to say, you know, wow, that was cool. I'd like to hear more. I'd like to see more. Um, Sons of Apollo, for example, is a band that kind of did that for me in the sense that um, I like Bumblefoot. I'm not a huge fan of Jeff Scott Soto, but I thought that the music was better than what I had expected. Uh, earlier this week, I posted the track from um, Black Country Communion. The band has never done anything for me because I, I think that Glenn Hughes on his own, his solo stuff is is better. The, the, the sum is never greater than the parts for a lot of these bands. And for example, that Black Country commun co Communion or whatever the band is called, it's got one riff that gets boring. You get to the solo, you have a monster player like Joe Bonamassa, and you're thinking, okay, it's time for him really to kick this song into another gear. And it's, oh, wow, he's noodling on the guitar with no distortion. That kind of is a mood killer. <laughs> you know, I don't know. But um, Brad, what are your thoughts, both on, on this band and, and some of these thrown together supergroups? Wow. Um I'll, I'll greet this with as I do with all of the, these type of projects. Is I, or I think oh, this this could be really awesome, and then usually I'm somewhat disappointed. So I'm I'm gonna I'm really excited to hear what they're doing, and I hope it's going to be really cool. And I hope they do something then more than just an album. It'd be cool if they would uh, get out there and play. Uh, so I would I would go see that, and if they do the Bush air anthrax. I, I'd love to see that. So, yeah, bring it, boys. Now, um, all these other supergroup bands. <sighs> you know, at least like like Sons of, of Apollo. They were they were a real band. I mean, they toured. They they right. toured twice. Uh, it was the last band I saw before COVID shut things down. And I. I thought live they were better than on the record as far as the songs. I thought the songs really came across to me uh, live. I enjoyed it. And I, and I think it was the best vehicle I've ever seen for Jeff Scott Soto. Uh, you know, where he, right. I, he, he sounded, he sounded great in that band. He wasn't obnoxious or annoying. Um, you know, trying to, you know, trying to look like a gangster or something. He, he was just a, a great rock singer when, with, with those guys so but now that's gone so yeah and i haven't listened to the new the new uh um what is it nephews of apollo <laughs> something oh, about yeah. gods of war yeah no, war or, skill or, yeah i haven't listened to it either yeah i haven't listened to it yet i just bought it actually so i need i need to give it a listen but the stuff i've heard so far is just it's it's uh yeah it's not like uh Stuff you'd want to just put on to relax, that's for sure. Uh, but none of this music is, is it? Um, <laughs> yeah, so I'm I'm all in. Uh, you know, people doing new music, uh, bring it out. But I want bands I can go see. Uh, that's kind of priority for me, even though nobody comes anywhere near where I live now. Uh, but I'm willing to travel. Okay, I, I will go. I will go. That's a, you, you live in a nice, quaint nice area nothing wrong with that and you're willing to go so and you're probably going to go to m m3 so you got the right I, yeah yeah i'll be in the right m lifestyle three weeks i'll be in yeah. i'll be in baltimore in three weeks man it's it's the people that say hey you got to come to my town you got to come right to me and i i don't want to make any effort fuck those people <laughs> <laughs> I've traveled across the country to go see Armored Saint. I've gone to Phoenix and New Mexico and to go chase kicks and all that shit. That's what you got to do. You I, know, I, I tell you, it, it, as well, especially when I was working, going on a destination uh, concert uh, thing was a lot more fun because then you, you know, that's all you had to, that was your plan. You know, that's, that was it for the day. It's not like oh, I got to get to work. I got to get home from work. I got to get, you know, this, that, and I got to get this person here. And, you know, you're like spinning plates to, to make it to a show and you get there, you're just like mentally exasperated 
you know, and then it's like, well, now I got to get home and get ready to go to work again in the morning. Like you go somewhere to a show, you, you fly out, you're there for a day or so you all day, you're looking forward to the show. You go to the show, you go back to the hotel. You're, you know, it's like, God, this is, this is fantastic. So I'm all about hitting the road for a, a good rock show. Yeah, I, I love when people uh, make, you know, they, they have posts about whatever show they just played on their tour. Uh, an artist has posted something and you get underneath, come play Topeka, man. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't been here in 25 years. Yeah, because it's the middle of fucking Kansas. Nobody's there. Yeah. You had to get Kansas in there, didn't you? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Uh, before I forget, Sean Richmond has uh, joined us in the chat. Hello, Sean. Hope you're having a great day. Hope your week went well. And, hey, uh, hey, Sean, you got to go back to the beginning so you can catch all the f bombs. So. <laughs> we've we've continued throughout. We've we've kind of uh, sown the seeds and we've been picking. Now them we're up kind of we're kind of like sprinkling now, just yeah. here here and there. Before it was like it was like the dam burst. And it was all full of F, you know, it was <laughs> destroying everything in its path. It was awesome. Yeah. All right. Next, um, next thing here, uh, Slash has released a second song off of his upcoming blues album. And my question to you guys is who's clamoring for a Slash blues album? Dan, what are your thoughts? Have you heard either one of the two tracks? You just posted the one today, and it's not needed, uh, the Fleetwood Mac tune, but it's a great song. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm willing to listen to it. I like the blues music. It sounds so far like at least it's well-produced, and it's probably all classics. It's not necessarily that Slash wrote them. So it seems like he's going to have good collaboration with other members. I'm willing to give it a shot. Uh, I think it's going to be okay for me. Okay. Ed, your thoughts? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm very picky about blues. You know, I, I love that genre, especially older Delta blues and, you know, John Lee Hooker and Muddy Waters and all those players. Stevie Ray Vaughan, of course, is the, the modern god on – blues um buddy guy yeah all those guys um i but you know i know i know slash i don't know if slash is uh fully a white boy or not but i sometimes have a hard time watching white people do the blues <laughs> because there, that's something that you know there's a spirit and a soul <clears throat> that um it takes to make really good authentic blues music and uh you know that's something that only a select amount of people have and so you know a lot of people you know like to do that but it's not often i hear something that's that exciting to me um but i don't know but, but people can surprise you though too you, i guess you know you never know until you hear them um a lot of times it helps too when you see them in a live setting to see how their personality matches the blues that they're trying to play. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I can be kind of weird when it comes to my opinions on blues. I think that's, that's interesting. Getting back to what Brad mentioned about these super groups playing together. Now he's releasing this. Is he going to tour it because everything has guests on it? It's kind of like his first, not his first solo album, his third solo album, mm -hmm. which had, Fergie and Dave Grohl and all these different people on it. And he ended up bringing Miles Kennedy into the band and <sighs> doing the songs with him. Uh, is he going to go back on tour and mix these in with his usual songs? I don't know. I guess we'll, we'll have to see. Uh, Anthony, are you excited about a slash blues album? No, uh, definitely not excited about it. But that one he did with Brian Johnson was—I was pleasantly surprised by that one. Okay, 
So well, yeah. that was a good song. Yeah. So I don't know. We'll see. Like, I don't know if I'm gonna listen to it. Like, if, if I come across a song like I did, what the Brian Johnson one, I'll listen to it. But I'm not gonna go searching out a Slash album. Okay. Brad, how about you? I don't know. Actually, I was, I was pretty indifferent before we started talking about this, but now I'm really, um, I'm really interested to hear this album. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna check it out. Uh, be excited. We'll, we'll see. I'm not like, I can't wait till this drops. Um, you know, I, I, I call it, call me blasphemous, but I mean, Slash is a guitar player. He's, I mean, he's good, but he doesn't get me all like, holy crap. You know, put having him like as your guest on an album doesn't make me want to buy the album. I'm not, I'm not that. Yeah, I mean, it, I'm, it's not a negative thing. It's just he doesn't really excite me. Um, I like uh, several of the the songs he's done as a solo artist or in his current band that's not Guns N' Roses. I like a lot of their songs, but they're they're still not stuff. I, I mean, yeah, if he came. Yeah, I wouldn't travel to go see him. There you go. That's that's the answer. If he fell, if he showed up at M three, I would be there, and I would, I would, I would not choose that time to go to the bathroom. There you go. Uh, the song, you know the, the drummer from Guns N' Roses, the original drummer, Stephen Adler. Bless his heart, man. I've seen his thing way too many times, and. <laughs> It it does nothing for me. Nothing. It's like a it's like a you know, you walk into a bar and there's a band covering Guns N' Roses. That's exactly what it's like. And they're all good musicians and everything, but it's just kind of it's not the it's it's like an act. It's not genuine. You know what I mean? There's no like real spirit there behind the music. Um yeah, so they're he's he's gotta heat the pool. <laughs> yeah, he, maybe he should do a blues album. There you go. Um, personally, the song that I posted today, that Fleetwood Mac song, yeah, I absolutely hate that song. I've heard it <laughs> so many damn times. Really? I've never been a Fleetwood Mac fan. And I was like, okay, well, maybe this is like the Brian Johnson song. I was... Uh, due to my ignorance, I wasn't familiar with the original. And I was like, okay, well, this sounds kind of neat. You know, that verse riff that Slash is playing is different for him. Oh, let's see what Fleetwood Mac song it is. Oh, it's this fucking song. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but when you say a blues album, are you like when you say, when you just say he's doing a blues album, I'm thinking more authentic blues. Or, or are you talking about a blues rock record? If it's blues rock, that's that's different. You know, yeah. obviously, lots and lots of people can pull off blues rock really well. Um, yeah. What what is what do you think he's doing? What is he producing? I mean, there. Un unless I'm messing this up, they're referring to it as a blues album. Huh. Um, yeah, you know, like metal, you know, blues has got a lot of different genres to it. Yeah. So that's uh, like, that's a big term to use to let you know exactly what it is. Yeah, let's see what the... Do uh... you have a track list? Yeah. Nice. Victor the Insider, man, he's got all the info. It's, it, it is on the internet, Brad. Not all that inside. Internet. <laughs> you realize where I live? Oh wait, I did this. You just the the way the way that you said that was like uh, the Bugs Bunny cartoon. Snow in July. Um, all right, so it's the Pusher featuring Chris Robinson, Crossroads with Gary Clark Jr., Uchi Kuchi with Billy Gibbons. Oh Well, which is the one that I posted today with Chris Stapleton. Mm. Key to the Highway, featuring Dorothy. 
Mm. Awful Dream featuring Iggy Pop. Born Under a Bad Sign featuring Paul Rogers. Ooh, that'll Pop be good. Rolling Stone featuring Demi Lovato. <laughs> Killing Floor with Brian Johnson. Living for the City with Tosh Neal. Stormy Day with Beth Hart. And finally, it just says Metal Chestnut. Yeah, that sounds like more of a blues rock thing that he's doing there. And that should be good. You know, he's he's uh, like, like uh, who was saying that, you know, he doesn't blow your mind as a player. And I feel the same way. But uh, I do recognize he's a great player. And um, he sounded that Brian Johnson tune that he did was great. And I expect the some of the other tunes might be pretty, pretty darn good, too. All right. Um, yeah. let's, let's move on to, uh, Carrie King and residue, which is the second track off of his solo album, which was released today. Uh, Ed, did you get a chance to listen to it or you're waiting for the full album to come out? Yeah, I'm still waiting. Okay. When that record is released, I'll, we'll hit the country roads here one evening and, <laughs> and then come back with my opinion. Okay. After a good full listen. Dan, did you get a chance to listen to it? I haven't heard it yet either. Uh, if it just came out today, I've been working. Is uh, is the is the full album with uh, Mark from uh, Death Angel? I, I don't know. It it is the the Could lineup uh, features uh, Mark, Phil, Demel, also from Category Seven, um, mm. Paul Bostoff from Slayer fame, and Troy Sanders on bass. Yeah, I have I haven't heard it. Sorry, Victor and uh, everybody okay. H- hadn't That's had a chance yet. But I'm will I want to hear it. Yeah, Anthony, did you get a chance to listen to it? I I heard half of it. Okay, your impression? Well, I turned it off. Uh, so that's so I heard the first half. half you heard. I heard the first half no, of it. Not the second half. Okay. Yeah. A lot I of swearing it. in the first half. Yeah. I thought it was pretty <laughs> like dull. Um, yeah it just it didn't do anything for me much like the last one well the last one was better actually right okay uh brad i don't know if you got to listen to this if if yeah i listened to the first half of the first half (laughs) and and I was like, yeah, this this just isn't my thing. It's it's just not my thing. Okay. So, yeah. So that's that's. I'm not going to say it's bad. It's just it's just not my bag. You mean okay. you think it would, but no. And the the video with all the uh, pentagrams, pentagrams on fire, uh, like, you know, <laughs> a little cliche, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah, the, the, the two songs, Ed, if you want, you can cover your ears. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the two songs so far, I mean, on the one hand, you could say, okay, well, well, Carrie's doing, you know, what we are expecting from Slayer. But at the same time, it's Carrie doing what we're expecting from Slayer. And, and given, given the musicians that he has, especially Mark on vocals, this comes back to like a um, Alicia from uh, from Arch Enemy. Like she's got this range, and she's just doing the guttural vocals. Oh. Mark is sounding like Tom Araya. Yeah, and and he's phrasing like him as well. It, oh, it's okay. like, yeah, like I get it. Like uh, maybe you, Kerry has written these pieces. He's like sing it, sing it like this, right. And which is probably mm. what he said to Tom, and now he's saying it to Mark, and so it's the same, right? Right. That that's that that is probably pretty much on the money, and and the thing is that Mark is one of the best singers in all of metal, uh, not only because what he's done in Death Angel, in my opinion, but he still has his voice all these years later. Like you have that 
in your, you know, you have that tool at your disposal. You have that in your arsenal. And okay, just sing like Tom, phrase it like Tom. You know, that's the only thing that I want. And the the intro to the song sounds cool because of what Paul kind of does at the beginning. It's like, okay, well, this is kind of intricate and 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 a little different. <clears throat> but then once like the riff kicks in, it's like, okay, well, yeah, all right. This is kind of exactly what you said. It's like the first song, but not as good. So Victor, if yeah. you were interviewing Mark, would you have the balls uh to ask him if he was told to sing like Tom? Yes. Wow. Yes, because and it's funny because I've uh, one of the one of the things that I've had pitched to me mm -hmm. recently was speaking to uh, Tony from Lords of Black. And as a lot of us have commented on uh, within the Patreon group, that it's the kind of the only band that Ronnie Romero kind of stands out in. Mm -hmm. And my question would be to him exactly that saying, hey, you know, kind of the consensus between my listeners is that this is the only place where Ronnie kind of shines where he isn't boring. What do you think of that? You know, um, I, you know, if I had, if I had the pleasure to talk to Mark, I'd ask him that. And look at the end of the day, it's Carrie's band. It's his name all over it. And these guys are a bunch of employees. Yeah. So, they're being they're being told what he wants, and there's no shame in that, you know. No. You know he's no. he's getting a payday for it, and I understand it. And you know people that knock that kind of stuff, it it comes back to the whole kiss thing. It's the same thing. Oh, I would never wear that makeup. Blah blah blah. No, you would. Fuck you. If you're a fan of the band and you've always wanted to play with them, you would suit up. In that makeup, in that, you would learn all the moves the mm -hmm. way that they asked you to because you would be making a shitload of money and you'd be doing something that you've always wanted to do. Dude, Mark, uh, Mark, Mark could be a big fan of Slayer. He is a big yeah. fan of Slayer, and he may want to do the Tom thing. So right. that could be on him too. So I, d I don't I think saying. it's a case where he's... Well, look, I don't know, but I wouldn't imagine it's a case where he's being told to sing like Tom. I, it's just like yeah. he's Tom would have sung songs that Kerry wrote, and now Mark's singing songs that Kerry wrote. So they were coming from the same place. So um, I'm okay. I want a new Death Angel. That's, that's the way he Mark's writes songs. Covers. And when Death Angel comes with a new release, I want it to sound like Mark and Da. That and, yeah, and and that could very well be the case. You know, where he's hearing the songs and he's saying, this needs Tom's voice, so I'm going to yeah. sing it like how Tom would have sung it. That that could mm. very well be as well the, the, the case. I mean, that's that would be... I, I mean, I, if again, if I had the pleasure of speaking to him, that would be a, a way of kind of having a two-prong attack on that question. You know, were you asked to sing this way? Or did you feel that that was what the the material warranted? So, mm -hmm. yeah, that'd be a very uh, diplomatic way to discuss that. Um, Ed will get back to us in a few weeks when Napalm releases the album. <laughs> I will, and and I'm anticipating him his vocals being the way that you're describing. Because kind of like Dan said, if, if it was his Death Angel vocals, then it would probably sound too much like a new Death Angel record. You know, vocalists can affect a band that much. Could be. You know, that, yeah. So I'd like to hear him doing something different, even if it is mimicking <clears throat> Tom a bit. Um, that I mean, that's going to fit Terry uh, Terry, uh, Carrie's style of writing. Okay, makes sense. Uh, last thing here, um, CJ Snare, lead singer of Firehouse, passed away earlier this week, I believe. Um, I was never a, a big Firehouse fan, and they had one huge single at the end of the 80s, early 90s, song that uh, got played at a lot of weddings. Um, so... Um, 
64 is definitely uh, early to go. And um, I'm surprised at how many people are coming out and saying stuff about him because the band, you know, again, had one really big hit and really didn't have anything else. But it's a band that has been together putting out music and touring for the better part of the last 30 years. Um, Brad, I'm assuming that you're probably the the most likely adept at uh, speaking about Firehouse here. Were, were you a fan? Were, or are they Yarg metal worthy? Um, actually, uh, I do play uh, some of their stuff. Mostly, um, well, you know, I interviewed Bill Leverty, Leverty. Okay. Who I think is an incredible guitar player, really, really great guitar player, but even more uh, just a cooler dude. And I just really enjoyed chatting with him. And um, yeah, he he's the kind of guy I guess sent him a message right now, and he'd he'd message me back. And um, he's 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 not a you know he's just he's just a down to earth good old Virginia boy. Uh, CJ, I've never really been a huge fan of uh, his vocals. No, the vocal tones is a little bit, uh, I think for, for hard rock, a little bit softer. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to say it, but I got to say that, and I've seen him many times and, and I've just kind of been like, ah, I want to like these guys better, you know, mostly because Bill being in the band, I want to like them better. Last year at uh, M3, they were really, really good. And CJ was singing uh, at that point. So I know that when he was diagnosed, he was given less than a year to live and he made it for almost four years. Uh, so that's, I think that right there says a lot about the guy and his character and the fact that he, they had a substitute singer doing a lot of shows in the last year, but he did M3 and I had no idea he, he was sick, but he sang his ass off and ran around the stage, looked like a pro. That band that night was on fire. Uh, I mean, they they won they won the day. I mean, they were the best band that played that day. And, uh, I was like, oh, who knew? You know, who knew? So he seemed like a good dude. Um, you know, it's tough on uh, everybody who knows. I mean, the fact that everybody's coming out of the woodwork talking about what a great guy he was and sharing pictures with him and stuff. I think that tells you a lot about what kind of guy he was. So. Um, yeah, we, 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 we don't all get to be here for the same amount of time. Uh, so you want to make your time count. And probably 64 CJ years were pretty good. So. All right. Okay. Anyone else want to mention something about CJ Snare? All right. Uh, a good moment we'll, of silence, though. Appreciate we'll, that. Thanks, Brad. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Real quickly before we wrap things up here, uh, Sean Richmond has been with us the entire show. He did mention that uh, his hoodie arrived yesterday. First one was Ooh. too small, but I was what? told to keep it. New one is perfect. Excellent customer service at no extra cost. Um, I appreciate you sharing that with us because I mean, it's, I've gone through various providers uh, with the merch. I always want to make sure that uh, the merch is available both in the States and in Europe because um, uh, some, some places are only available, uh, only make their merch available in the States and it costs an arm and a leg to get over here and into Europe. And uh, this isn't the first time someone else has had an issue with sizing or with um, the colors being off. I forget what it was. And they've said, keep it. We'll just send you another one. So that's awesome. Nice. To hear. So uh, if you do want to support the show with any merch, just go to signalsfromars.com and uh, you'll find merch across the top. Uh, you'll also find links to the social media where you could catch the entire replay of this or subscribe to the podcast. Uh, gentlemen, I do want to thank you for joining me tonight. Anthony in Ireland, Brad in, damn it, I want to say Utah still, in Idaho, 
Ed in Kentucky and Dan in California. Thank you all. Yes, thank you for the uh, ge geographic uh, lesson in, in um, yes. geology, whatever. Map reading, cartography. There you go. Uh, thank you guys for, for joining me live tonight for your all of your input. Thank you, Sean, for joining us in the chat. And uh, thank you to anyone who's listening or watching the replay of this. We will see you next time right here on Signals from Mars. See you, folks. Thank you for watching the Signals from Mars live stream. You can watch the show live on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. Or check out replays on YouTube. Go to SignalsFromMars.com for more information. This concludes our show.